In Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi fly their interceptors across the skies, as they attempt to rescue the kidnapped Chancellor Palpatine. As Separatist Tri Fighters emerge, they attempt to form a movement to navigate their way through to Grievous' flagship. At the head of the movement is Anakin, and approaching the dogfight, remarks that this was where the fun would begin. But what if Anakin hadn't said this? How would this change Star Wars history? As you are about to see, a lot changes. Assuming their formation, Anakin is oddly nervous about flying for this mission. He felt a great burden on his shoulders at having to rescue his mentor. Shrugging this off, he looks at Obi-Wan in the interceptor beside him, looking focused and controlling his hate for flying. But suddenly, as Anakin looked back forward, he saw a Separatist tri fighter hurling towards him before he knew no more. Obi-Wan, meanwhile, had sensed the nervousness of his Padawan beside him. This was most unusual behaviour for his normally overconfident Padawan. Perhaps he was nervous about Soka's confrontation with Maul or Mandalore. As he focused on the incoming Separatist tri fighters he saw one heading straight for Anakin, but he expected him to try one of his fancy tricks and roll away. To his horror, the fighter hurtled straight into Anakin's starfighter, exposing Anakin to the elements. Everyone knew that this mission was important, but his duty to his Padawan was always a master's priority. Using the Force, Obi-Wan pulled the unconscious Anakin towards him, while Star 4 took control of the Starfighter, and R2 stabilised himself. As Anakin reclined on top of the fighter, Obi-Wan regained manual control of the Starfighter, and hurried R4 to contact the Jedi Council. The concerned face of Grandmaster Yoda popped up, the transmission getting more clear, as Obi-Wan pulled himself away from the middle of the battle. Yoda quickly orders Obi-Wan to return to the Star Destroyer with Anakin, and head back into the battle. Calling his squadron to temporarily retreat, undoing all of their progress, they all head back to the Star Destroyer. Unfortunately, along the way, several of the V-19 Torrent Starfighters are lost, as well as R-4. Heading back into the battle with another Starfighter in R-2, Obi-Wan weaved his way through the waves of Tri-Fighters, Vulture Droids and Buzz Droids, before breaking the containment shield to the Invisible Hand, and making a scruffy landing. Leaping out of his bruised Starfighter, Obi-Wan and R2-D2 located Palpatine, as Obi-Wan entered the turbo lift. Destroying the droids in the lift, the brief pause to the top of the ship did not help Obi-Wan shake off his nervousness regarding Anakin's condition. Exiting the lift, all was quiet, as he took several paces forward, and saw Palpatine bound to his seat. Moving down the steps to the same level as Palpatine, he is about to free the Chancellor, before he hears the distinct clicking sounds of B2 battle droids. Turning around, he finds his hearing to be accurate, and sandwiched between the two was Count Dooku. The Sith Lord was normally hard to read, but he could see a tinge of disappointment etched across his face. As Dooku and the droid dropped down, the Sith Lord taunted Obi-Wan, deeming the task of facing only Obi-Wan to be too easy. Obi-Wan had had enough of Dooku's taunts, and lifted the two B2 battle droids into the air, crushing them with the force. Dooku swept the debris to one side, and ignited his blade. Opposite him, Obi-Wan did the same, and assumed his Ataru stance, surprising the Count, who had been expecting a Sora Su stance. Dooku smirked, as having trained Qui-Gon, he knew every single one of the form's weaknesses. Meeting Obi-Wan's blade, he set about taking the Jedi Master apart. Using a mix of Ataru and Shi Cho, Obi-Wan was working hard to not allow the Count to strike him, but eventually, the Count grazed his shoulder, sending him stumbling backwards. Dooku smirked, and internally, so did Obi-Wan. The Count was getting too comfortable. Obi-Wan immediately switched back to his favourite Sora Su, and the Count suddenly had to work a lot harder, as he found that this time, Obi-Wan's defences were impenetrable. Taking a step back, Dooku force pushes Obi-Wan, and attempts to launch bits of debris towards him, but the Jedi Master rolls away. Getting back to his feet, Obi-Wan could sense Dooku was tiring, and they locked blades once more. In his chair, Palpatine was observing the battle with greater interest. He had been initially disappointed that Anakin had not arrived, but Obi-Wan was proving to be a far tougher opposition than expected. He had never seen such mastery of Form 3. Finally, Obi-Wan manages to disarm a tired Dooku, and Palpatine was left with a choice, knowing that he could not convince Obi-Wan to kill Dooku. He could allow Dooku to be captured by the Jedi, and hoped he would not betray him, or kill the Jedi Master himself, and spare Dooku. That is it for part 1 of What If Anakin Never Said This Is Where The Fun Begins. What Palpatine does next is up to you in the comments below. 
Please like this video and subscribe for more TIFFs. And as always, leave a comment or what if you'd like to see next. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.